We've had caffeine this morning. <laughs> Yee -hee. Hi, welcome back to our channel. I'm Anna. And I'm Stephanie. And this is Around the World Eats. Each week we throw a dart at a map, which we have right here. And wherever that dart lands, we find something and we make something from that country. So last week when we threw the dart, it landed in China. And since China is such a vast region, we decided to cook a meal or a dish from the region that it landed on, or the specific region, and that happened to be Tibet. So we are gonna be cooking butter tea and sampa. Did I say that right? I think it's sampa. Sampa, butter tea and sampa. Yeah. All right, so ingredients that we needed for today are salt, half a teaspoon of salt, butter, black tea, we also have barley. This is pulled and pearled barley and milk. So pretty simple, um, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so to make the sampa, right? <laughs> pretty much it's just the butter and the barley. We have to roast the barley. So we're gonna just plop it into a pan. We're gonna go ahead and roast that on medium high heat. We're also, I cannot right now. <laughs> We're also going to brew the tea, the black tea in we, the two cups of water that we have on the stove. Um, in a perfect world, we would have true Tibetan tea, but it is very hard to come by unless we order it online. So we just found the plainest black tea that we could. Uh, and I think we should just leave it in the tea bags when we're putting it on the stove. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to strain it. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact time with Anna and Stephanie. Woo! <laughs> so the, our first fun fact is that the standard language that they speak there is Tibetan and it's called Standard Tibetan, and their written language is called Classic Tibetan. Um, also, Tibet has two different nicknames that it is known by. It's known as the Third Pole. So there's like the North Pole, and then there's the South Pole, and Tibet is sometimes called the Third Pole. And then the other nickname that they have is the Roof of the World, and a lot of people go there to kind of find like inner meaning and self-understanding and stuff like that. Going by what Anna just said of the nickname being the roof of the world, the average elevation in Tibet is 14,763 feet, and that is 4,500 meters, and it is the highest plateau on earth. So if you are from lower elevation, a lot of times um, they'll give you oxygen. So, because there's no oxygen up there. Um, another really cool one is, so Mount Everest is located in, um, in between Nepal and Tibet and the Himalayas. And that is a big part of kind of also tracking back to what I said before of people going to find solace or finding um, just like truth within and stuff like that. Our next fun fact is that 47% of the world's population depend on water that flows down from the Himalaya mountains in Tibet. So that is pretty much half. Yeah, so that's a lot of water that comes from there. <laughs> um, also, uh, so Tibet is an autonomous region. Uh, and then many, so many Tibetans dispute the legitimacy of China's rule over them and they see themselves as the autonomous, yeah, the autonomous region of Tibet, the T-A-R, Tibet Autonomous Region. And um, there was a treaty that was signed between Great Britain and China that China would be the would rule over Tibet, but no Tibetans were there for this and part of the conversation of this treaty, so they dispute that legitimacy. Poor Tibet getting pooped on by all of China so and all the other countries <laughs> around it for its entire life. Yeah. <laughs> The people in Tibet, most of them, I think it said 95% of people who live in Tibet follow Buddhism, 
and they have the highest con concentration of monasteries anywhere in the world, and that means... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tibet has around 7,000 monasteries. Also, a lot of theater in China uh, follows the ideals and is inspired by Buddhism. So I thought that was also kind of fun that Anna taught me. Theater kid! <laughs> uh, also, something that's really interesting is that you can't travel in Tibet without a permit or a guide. And that's... And Tibet was actually closed off to all travel up until, I think, 1985. And then in um, 2008, there, I think, if I remember correctly, it was about three months where China closed Tibet to all foreign travelers. Our last fun fact is that the most common domestic animal in Tibet is the yak. And also, speaking of yaks, our butter that we're going to be using, if this was real, uh, not real. If it followed the recipe a little bit closer. If it followed the recipe as, co recipe as closely as possible, this would be yak butter, um, but we just have American butter. It's cow butter. Yep. Woo! Go team! roasted inside the blender and we're going to blend it up. blended our barley, our roasted barley into flour. Um, we actually pulled out the bullet. The bullet did a better job at grinding it up into a really fine powder rather than this stand-up blender, but we are going to be using the stand-up blender for the butter tea. Alright, let's go ahead and put the tea in. wine glasses because they're clear because I want everyone to be able to see when we pour it in there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. <laughs> Lastly, we're going to use our other half of our butter and mix it in with the barley. barley. We might need more butter than that. So, we're ready to taste it. What do you want to try first? Um, I think we should just go this way. Okay. So this is the barley mixed with the butter. Um, and what I've learned is since uh, Tibet is such a mount 
Mount Trump. Mountainous? That is mountainous. <laughs> what I've learned about Tibet is because it's so mountainous, uh, the way that they eat the sampa mm -hmm. is um, really easy to travel or like... On the go? Or... Yeah, I mean they're kind of like little protein balls. So they can just throw them in a pack and then they can go um, and travel wherever they need to to get from town to town. So, Tick! Whoa. I took a way bigger bite. <laughs> it does, it is much like a protein ball. Like, it's a lot, there was that, almost that nutty flavor at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's a very nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think that that grain, the barley, has such of a like strong flavor. Yeah. This is very strong, mm -hmm. but it's good. I like it. I think. <laughs> it is salty. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about that cheese. Mm -mm. I think it, it it's also a little bit of that mental thing of tea being salty. Yeah, because we, I mean, we live in the U.S. and we very much drink our tea very, very, very sweet mm -hmm. um, with sugar and milk. And this does have the milk, so it's very, it has the very smooth mm -hmm. texture. But when, with the salt added, I also wonder how different it would be if we had the right kind of black tea. Right. Mm -hmm. That tea is already smoother too. Right. Or softer. I think it's just because my brain is like, what process is happening? Is. What is happening? You're right. So I was telling Anna earlier, um, so because the elevation is so high in Tibet, they're prone to having really dry, cracky lips. And because they drink so much butter tea, the butter in the tea um, kind of gives them a natural moisturizer. So the more tea they drink, the more moisturized their lips are, and they're not gonna crack in such a high, harsh environment. And then the last thing, um, so what we did is we mixed the barley butter mixture with the butter tea, and it is more like a porridge consistency. Um, and this is another way that I've heard that they like to eat it. Um, so we're trying both ways. Right. All right. I also hate the texture of porridge, so. <laughs> wow. Can't do it. <laughs> I don't like the texture. I don't like the texture. I much prefer it in the ball. Ooh. Hello food lovers, I'm Anthony, I'm Stephanie's fiance, and today I'm going to be trying sampa and butter tea from uh, Tibet. So I'm told I need to eat this first, then that, and then that. So let's get to it. These look super cute. <laughs> that is very strong and in your face. <laughs> So I personally don't like it, <laughs> but that's just my food tastes, I guess. Um, I don't really know what to even say about that. So we're gonna move on to the tea as soon as I finish chewing. Yeah. Okay. There, tea time. <laughs> it's like I'm drinking salt water. <laughs> so, I was thinking about this. We don't usually put salt in liquids ever, at least here in the U.S. <laughs> like, you eat salty foods, but I, this might be the first salty drink I've ever had. <laughs> um, alright. Final thing. I guess it's porridge. Alright. I'm going to take a smaller bite this time because I'm uncertain. 
Okay, yeah. <laughs> I really don't like any of this. <laughs> Overall, though, I think they did a good job um, recreating what the dish is supposed to be. From what I know, I don't know a lot. Um, but yeah, it's very salty, very strong. Good job, girls. All right, it's time to throw the dart. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that is. is right in between France and Spain. I think it's France. From this angle, it looks like France. It is more in France than in Spain. Yep. Woo! Alrighty, friends, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure to give it a like, a subscribe, and share. If you comment on our videos, we'll do our best to comment back as fast as possible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.